Just a quick note before we get started here. We produced this episode months ago. This was kind of us getting a feel for the production. Think of this as like the test pilot. Right now I need a little personal time, so I'm going to put up this video. So if it seems a little janky compared to the newer stuff, that's why. I want to share a cutscene with you. This is something really special. It's the most nonsensical cutscene I've ever seen in a AAA game. The scene in question is from Hitman Absolution. If you're not into the series, the setup goes like this. Agent 47 is a genetically engineered assassin. His job was to infiltrate heavily guarded places and take out powerful people without causing chaos. If you play well, then you'll only kill your assigned target. If you play really well, then you'll make it look like an accident and nobody will be the wiser. In this particular mission, your job is to infiltrate the Terminus Hotel and gather intel on what the bad guys are doing. You're not even supposed to kill anyone. Agent 47 has to sneak into the presidential suite. Or I guess you could also shoot your way in if you like playing games wrong. The goal is to crawl into a vent so you can eavesdrop on the conversation between our antagonist Dexter and Layla, his personal assistant. At this point, the mission is technically over. You've gathered the intel. 47 should theoretically leave at this point. But for some reason, we jump into cutscene mode, and this is where everything goes off the rails. Agent 47 enters the presidential suite. Inside is a guy that looks like Danny Trejo, blown up to Hulk-sized proportions. This is Sanchez, Dexter's bodyguard. Agent 47 tries to strangle him, and Sanchez throws him into the next room. 47 is knocked out. First off, 47 has no reason to enter this room. And even if he did, he has no reason to attempt to kill this guy. And even if he did, why is he trying to strangle him with piano wire? It's the one weapon in his arsenal that requires him to physically overpower his target. For crying out loud, his signature weapon is a silenced pistol. I should back up here and explain something. The hitman has this barcode tattooed on the back of his head. It's just this thing to drive home that he's this manufactured killing machine. At the start of the mission, Agent 47 renounced the agency he works for, and as part of that move, he cut the barcode off the back of his head. Now he's just got a bandage there. So now Dexter gets a look at Agent 47. The camera focuses on the bandage, and suddenly Dexter knows that Agent 47 is a hitman. Nobody else in the history of the franchise has been able to recognize Agent 47 based on this barcode. It's never been a problem before, but now that he's cut it off, covered it up, and he's lying on his back, Dexter can immediately tell he's a hitman. That would be like after years of nobody being able to see through Clark Kent's disguise, Kent puts on a mask that covers his entire face, and then someone goes, oh look, that guy is Superman. Next, there's a knock at the door. It's housekeeping. I'm not sure why housekeeping is going around knocking on doors in the middle of the night asking to clean the place, but whatever. Dexter invites her in, murders her with his own pocket knife, and then puts the murder weapon into 47's hand. He says he'd love to kill the legendary hitman, but that would bring him too much attention. Like, what? He already thinks that the agency is trying to assassinate him. Does he think they'll leave him alone if he doesn't personally kill the hitman that came to kill him? What's he afraid of here? What's he trying to accomplish? Is he trying to frame a hitman for murder? How would that bring him less attention than just killing the dude and dumping the body elsewhere? And just to be clear, yeah, he's trying to frame a hitman for murder. The frame-up isn't even needed. 47 tried to kill Sanchez when he entered the room. That's attempted murder. That's a real crime. Just call the cops and you're done. When Dexter's done framing 47, he cheers and says, Yee-haw! I'll tell you, I don't ordinarily yee-haw, but this is a fucking yee-haw! Why is he happy about this? What is he getting out of it? He's got a dead maid in his room. Even if this stupid plan worked, he's still got to pack his bags and stay in a different hotel tonight. So then Dexter begins dousing the room in alcohol. He's decided to start a fire, even though that contradicts everything we just saw. He's going to set fire to his own hotel room, which ought to kill the guy he just said he needed to spare, and also destroy all the evidence he just planted. What's he going to tell the police? That this bald guy snuck into his room, assassinated the maid, then set fire to the room and took a nap in the middle of the floor? 
Dexter and his entourage then flee the room with no luggage, leaving all their belongings to burn. We cut to the moment when Agent 47 wakes up. In the first half of this cutscene, he was on his back with his hands at his sides, and now he's on his stomach with his arms over his head and the knife isn't anywhere to be seen. I wouldn't make a big deal about little continuity errors like this, but the last three minutes of this cutscene were spent establishing the details of this ridiculous frame up. 47 wakes up in a burning room and his first move is to block one of the exits. He wasn't awake for the previous scene, so he has no way of knowing the cops are coming for him. For all he knows, he's trapping himself in a burning room for no reason. But the cops are indeed coming. Dexter fled the hotel, called the police, and the SWAT team somehow made it all the way to the hotel and got to the top floor before the flames could cross the room. Dexter lit the carpet on fire. In fact, he poured the alcohol on the floor right in front of 47's face. But now the carpet is the only part of the room that isn't burning. The police are now trying to break down the door so they can question Agent 47 while the building burns down around them. The cutscene finally ends and we transition back to gameplay. I don't know what the furniture in the presidential suite is made of, but the entire room explodes as soon as 47 slips out the window. Despite this, the police still seem to act like they saw the crime scene. A helicopter chases you around. As 47 stands on a ledge outside the exploding building, the police shout at him to stay where you are. Like, really? Stay right here on the ledge? Is someone going to come out on the ledge and ask me questions? Apparently they want to talk to you about the woman in the room who they never saw. Dozens of police continue to hang around inside of this burning building to arrest you. Eventually, the helicopter chases you around and fires into the smoke at random, because shooting indiscriminately into burning buildings at people trying to escape the flames is a perfectly normal way to manage suspects in the middle of a murder investigation of a victim they haven't even seen yet. Like, is the writer saying the police are corrupt thugs? Or do the police somehow know they're dealing with a legendary hitman? Or did Dexter pay them off? But if Dexter has that much power over the police, then why did he need to frame 47 for murder and burn down a hotel? Just, what is going on here? <sighs> okay, deep breath. There's a lot more. The entire game is filled with these sorts of nonsensical moments, but none of it is as deliciously moronic as this scene. I've heard people defend this mess by claiming it's satire. I'll admit, the scene is so bizarre that it's tempting to look for these sorts of explanations, but there's nothing really satirical here. There aren't any jokes, references, or callbacks to other works. Like, what movie is this scene supposedly satirizing? The only reason to think it might be satire is that it's just really extraordinarily bad. By that same logic, you could claim The Room is satire. This doesn't even feel like a Hitman game. The scenarios are wrong, the protagonist is out of character, and the gameplay is off. It feels like Ooh Bowl adapted Hitman into a movie, and Hitman Absolution is the tie-in video game for that. The good news is that the series has recovered. The last two Hitman games have been really good. I don't recommend playing Hitman Absolution, but it's probably worth checking out on YouTube. The whole thing is surreal, from the dialogue to the level design to the premise itself. So that's the dumbest cutscene in video games. Maybe there's something worse out there that I just haven't come across yet, but I've played a lot of games, and as far as I can tell, this is the absolute best worst cutscene. If you found something you think can top it, please tell me about it in the comments. So one of the things that's really annoyed me about YouTube over the last couple of years is how every stupid video has to start with someone begging you for engagement. Please like, share, and subscribe. So when I started this video series, I decided I wasn't going to do that. And what I found out from the, looking at the metrics is you have to do that. That's all the algorithm cares about. Right now, of the people that do hit the like or dislike button, 98% of them hit the like button. When people do leave a comment, it's very positive. And this is YouTube, so if these were terrible videos, people would be telling me. So the content is good, and yet the algorithm is showing people my videos less and less. I've watched viewership decline with each video, despite the fact that the public reception of the videos has been improving. And the only explanation I can think of for that is the algorithm only cares about engagement. It doesn't care how, what percentage of people like or dislike. All it cares is that lots of people hit the button. 
It doesn't care that the comments are favorable, it just cares that there are a lot of them. This begging for engagement is dumb and repetitive and it wastes everybody's time, but this is the world that YouTube's algorithm has built for us. If you don't want your content buried, you have to do this. And this is what I have to do because there's no point in making videos if nobody's going to be watching them. And so we have to placate the algorithm. So please like, share, and subscribe. Also, actually do leave a comment if you can think of a dumber cutscene than the one we just watched. I'm actually curious about that. I'm actually kind of a connoisseur of terrible cut- Well, actually I'm a connoisseur of complaining about terrible cutscenes, and that's nearly the same thing. Anyway, thanks for watching.